Hi and welcome back to Mixed Media Tuesdays. On Friday I posted a 101 original video where I shared a simple method on how you can create stunning backgrounds in just a few steps, perfect for beginners. If you haven't seen that video, you will find a link down below in the description area and I will also make sure to link it at the end of this one. And although in that video I was planning to share just the background technique, I couldn't stop myself so I went ahead and finished two of the pages by creating my own focal points. Now I got so many comments about that and uh, everyone was asking me to complete the next three pages and that's exactly what I'm going to do today by creating my own focal points. Before I go ahead and start creating the focal points, I'm going to talk a little bit about the binding since I got a few questions about that. Now, I like to use these discs because they give me an easy way to take out pages and put them back in. There are many options in the market for discs and I'm going to link a few down below so you can shop around. There are plastic ones in a big variety of colors as well as sizes. And in this case, the bigger the disc, the more pages you can accommodate in your book. Also, if you are using big discs, then you can have a quite of a dimensional page as well. The ones that I am showing you here are from the Happy Planner collection and uh, they are all plastic. There are others by Waffle Flowers in a big variety of colors, smaller ones. And these are my favorite. I get those from Amazon and I'm going to add the link down below. I love those because they are metallic. Just because they aren't plastic, uh, they feel sturdier, they, uh, they weight more. And these specific ones, I believe, come in black, in that uh, rose gold, as well as in gold. And there are, of course, different uh, sizes for those rings as well. Now, for making my DIY disc bound uh, journals, I always like to use thick watercolor paper, or you can use mixed media paper. In any case, you need something thick that would take mediums nicely. I also like to punch my own holes, that's why I have this Happy Planner uh, punch. There are others in the market. This one has a disadvantage. It only punches one page at a time since I'm using quite thick watercolor cardstock. Another way is to use dies. There is this set by Waffle Flower. For this specific one, that's the die that I used, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. If you don't want to create such books, you can always just cut out pages and buy them in any way that you like. And also you can get those um, pre-made and you will find the links below. I just wanted to share this info because I got a lot of questions about those. And let's start with creating our focal points for today. I'm going to start with the yellow and orange background and here is how the idea comes. I want to create a focal point that it is really striking on that yellow background. That's how I got the idea to go with a cactus. So first I'm going to draw with my pencil a pot. A really simple design. You will see that all the designs that I'm making with my pencil are super simple to make, but they come to life once you stick them on your page and you add all the shading and the color. Now I'm drawing my cacti and I will draw three similar shapes that are different in height. Super simple designs, now I'm going to use my scissors and cut everything out. I'm working on watercolor paper, this is the same thick watercolor paper that I used for the background. I'm just making sure that I erase any pencil lines and uh, just remember that nothing is perfect here and nothing has to be perfect, it's going to look just beautiful at the end. If you have already seen the first video where I created the backgrounds, you have seen that I used watercolor pens. You can definitely use your watercolors with a brush. I just find these really quick and simple to work with since you get the watercolor inside the barrel. So again, here I'm using my Aqua Flows and there are many different uh, brands in the market like these ones. And you will find a few linked below if you want to check them out. Now I'm uh, starting on the pot and I did spray some water first there. I'm going to add a darker shade of red and then a lighter one. They are going to blend nicely together. I'm squeezing a little bit more from the darker color just because I like shadows and I want them to be more uh, visible. I'm going to spray a little bit of water to help them blend more and I will leave that aside to dry. 
Now remember that depending on the watercolor palette that you are using and the brand of watercolor, this may um, dry to be more pale. I know that the ones that I am using are going to dry just the way they are, nice and vibrant. Now let's color the cactus. I am going to use uh, two shades of green, a lighter and a darker one, just to get uh, some variation of color. The idea here is to always have um, something uh, darker and something lighter. This is going to give more life to your focal points. I don't want to end up having a flat color that wouldn't look so interesting. And this way I end up having the same look and feel as my background, but of course in different colors. So everything will come together nicely when I stick everything on top. So for the pot and the cacti, I used my Aqua Flows markers, watercolor markers, but I don't have a big uh, collection and I didn't have a pink one. So I grabbed my Alta New ones. These come in a completely different uh, barrel, but they work the exact, exactly the same. They do have watercolor inside the barrel and they do have a um, real brush at the tip. I am going to color in some uh, pink color here on this scrap watercolor paper and then I'm going to use this one to cut out tiny little flowers. You can use a dye, a tiny flower dye if you have one. I'm just going to draw them and cut them out. So this video is meant to demonstrate that you don't really need to have in your arsenal a huge amount of stamps and dyes to create your focal points. Playing on your art journal has to be something fun and you don't have to break the bank. I do use a ton of uh, new stamps and dyes, but remember that this is my job. So uh, here is a way on how you can create your own focal points, how to bring them to life. And there are even more ways to create focal points. For example, you can cut out images from magazines and do collage. You can even print out images that you like and you find on the internet. Just be creative. I did add all my cacti inside my pot and uh, my focal point is pretty much ready. When I place it on top of the yellow and orange background, you can see the big contrast that I have and how my focal point really pops. From the pink cardstock I did cut out three tiny little flowers that I'm going to stick on top of my cacti just to embellish them a little bit more. I think it looks cuter this way. Actually the tiny one is a little hard. You can add a quote if you like and call this done. I'm going to do my favorite doodling with a black marker. So I'm starting by uh, drawing a black line all around my cutouts. I do have some black lines on the background, so I think that would look nice on this composition. I'm also going to draw lines for my cacti just to bring them more to life. All my lines are very sketchy, that's the style that I love, but you can go ahead and do whatever you feel like. I'm also going to draw some X's along those lines. They are going to look as if they are the spines of the cacti. If you want, you can draw a design on your uh, pot. I'm going to do a simple one here and you can even color it with another color. And finally, I'm going to bring in my white pen. This time I'm using a Posca. This is a paint marker and I'm going to add some highlights. I'm mainly going to follow the black lines just because I love the look of that white and black together. I always like to add a motivational quote on my art journals. For this one, I decided to go with Be a Cactus in a world of delicate flowers. I also like to print this out with my label maker, but you can definitely use your printer. The size of the font that I usually go with is 12. I'm going to use a piece of washi tape. You can use a strip from a black cardstock or whatever color you like. This is going to kind of ground my pot somehow so it doesn't flow there. And I like to cut out my quote in smaller parts so that I can stick it down. And I also like to combine the smaller font with a bigger font. So in this case, I'm combining the word cactus that I cut out from an alphabet die. I love alphabet dyes and uh, alphabet stamps and I collect them. I love how I can mix different fonts and sizes to create something more interesting to the eye. I always choose one word from the whole quote that I want to emphasize and this is the word that I go bigger. Of course, you can definitely write everything down if you love your handwriting. 
I like to go around those ribs with my black marker. And I always add some highlights on the big letters. I used that washi tape at the bottom and I wanted to add it in a different area of the project. That's why I'm going to cut out two uh, strips and just stick them at the top. And I think it is more pleasing to the eye. Again, remember there is no right or wrong in our journaling. It's just all about what you love to do. And of course, you can never stop with doodling. You can add borders with your white or your black uh, pen. I am going to add just a few here to demonstrate and I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm really happy with how this turned out and I'm going to put it back in my little art journal. Again, remember, you can work on the back of those pages. Just create a background like I did on the previous video and go for it. Here are some close-up photos on the first page for today. And let's move on and create a second page. This time I'm going to work on the green and blue background. And since I have those colors for my background, just to have an element pop there, I thought it would be fun to add something red. That's why I'm going with mushrooms, really simple to draw, and they will look just adorable at the end. Again, remember you don't want to have perfect lines there or perfect drawings like half circles and such. Having uh, your lines look more organic would fit better with the whole concept of art journaling. Now I'm placing the top of the mushrooms on my watercolor paper and to draw the bottom. I am doing that in two parts instead of drawing the whole mushroom at once because I want to use different colors for the bottom and the top. And I, want, I don't want those two colors to blend. This is the easiest way. Of course, that's just because I'm working with watercolor. If you are using just your pencils to add color on your focal points, you don't have to do that. And again, I'm going to use the exact same method like I used in this video in the previous one. This is for beginners, a 101, and I'm not going to introduce any new techniques. You will see that with the same technique, I will end up having dif five different original pages that will look really stunning, colorful, and bright. And here actually for my mushrooms, I'm using the exact two shades of red that I used for the pot in the previous page. For the stems of my mushrooms, I am using uh, yellow and I will combine that with uh, light brown just for some shading. And notice that I'm adding the shading on one side of the mushroom, which is exactly what I did for the top as well. Now it's time to put my mushrooms together, stick them down on my page and you will see that the moment you start sticking everything down they come to life somehow and I love how those simple drawings turned out to look so adorable. Also notice that as I stick down the mushroom I make sure that I don't cover up by mistake those punched areas just to avoid having to punch that page once again. Now for the next step I'm going to use three tiny little uh, dies to cut out circles which I'm going to use as the dots on the top of my mushrooms. Remember you don't have to do that, you can just draw directly on top of your mushrooms. I just love to play with die cuts and stick things around and here is me just having fun with my supplies. Also this was an afterthought so once I place all the dots on top I have to draw on top the curve of the outline of the mushroom and cut it out. It would have been easier if I stuck everything on top of the mushroom before I stick it on the page. This way I would be it would be easier for me to just cut out all the excess with my scissors. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, do as I say and not as I do. Now once I have the mushrooms down I'm going to follow the steps that I followed for the previous page. Again going around with my black marker and adding some sketchy lines. I also used my white paint to add some highlights on the mushrooms and I'm creating a border here. I did draw some sketchy lines around it and I'm coloring in those areas with white. If you want you can draw a tiny little butterfly and cut it out. I'm going to use a dye that I have on my stash and uh, for this one I'm going with orange and yellow just because this is going to stand out against the background again and it's going to make a great focal point. 
I did color the body and the antennas of my butterfly black and I'm just trying to decide which is the perfect placement for my butterfly. I'm going to play around with it a little bit. And for this page I decided to go with a quote from the booklet with the stickers that says choose to be happy and again I'm going to combine a bigger and a smaller font. This time the emphasis is on the word happy so I'm going to die cut the word happy by using a tie that I had in my stash which is bigger. If you are already a card maker you probably have a happy die in your stash since we use that word for happy birthday and uh, if you aren't you don't really need to have a happy die you can always just write it down. So here you can see again my favorite way of working with my motivational quotes by combining bigger and smaller fonts, mainly emphasizing in one word and this time it is happy. I am going to also use another sticker that says use your wings. And of course this is what you do when you don't know when to stop. I decided that those white spots were too bright so I'm just going to add some shadow on one side. And this time, instead of going with my brush marker directly to add color, I did add a little bit on my glass mat and then picking it up with a wet brush. This way I end up having a more uh, pale look since I didn't want to oversaturate that side with too much color. And I'm super happy with the finished page. I absolutely love those mushrooms. And I'm going to put it back in my little journal. Here are some close-up photos of the finished page. And I know this video is getting too long, but let's make the last page for this little booklet. And this time I got inspiration from those um, stamped circles on the background. And I decided to follow that pattern for the focal point on my card. So let's make a super adorable fish. I just used my washi tape there to create a circle. I'm drawing the mouth, the eyes and a little tail. I will also draw a couple of fins separately so that I can cut them out and add them on top of my fist for dimension. Again this is a very simple drawing but you will see how it is going to come to life at the end and it's going to look just stunning. Now I have all the three parts ready to go. I am going to color it in with yellows and oranges, yellow at the top and staying with orange at the bottom. I'm going to help those two colors blend and I will repeat the same process for the fins. Now the color, how I chose to go with yellow and orange, depends on the background. Yellow and orange is going to look nice and bright on top of my blue and purple background. Always make sure that your focal point is going to stand out, especially when you are going for a really colorful and bright and happy layout. And now let's put the focal point together. I'm going to stick those two fins that I created. And I did use the circle dies that I had uh, used in the previous mushroom page to cut out a white and a black circle. And depending on where you decide to stick that uh, black circle inside the eye, it's going to give a completely different look on your face. If you have one of those googly eyes where that black is moving inside, it would be fun to use that in this page as well. Now I don't want him to be alone, I'm going to give him some company, but I want him to stand out against the rest of the fish. That's why the rest of the fish are going to have the same shape, but they're going to be black. For that I did cut out a bunch of circles and I did cut out a bunch of hearts. The hearts are going to play the role of the tail. And since I want the fish to have the same look and feel, I'm also going to cut out tiny little uh, circles for the eye out of white. And all of these fish are going to swim all around my focal point. I'm sticking them down making sure that they are random. I don't want to have anything on the same line vertically or horizontally. And I'm also making sure that I leave some white space where I can stick my quote later on. For their eyes I have tiny little squares. Again you can just draw that with your white gel pen. And then for the centers I'm going to use later on my black nouveau drops. I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to accidentally touch the center of the eyes and make a mess. So first I'm going to use my black pen again and draw some sketchy lines just like I did on the previous pages. I'm going to bring in my white pen and add some highlights. 
And again, I'm going to print out my quote. This time I'm going with Y15 when you are born to stand out. And I'm going to have the word stand larger than the rest of the quote to emphasize that word even more. This time again, I use an alphabet die set to cut out all the letters and put together the word stand. And so I'm doing some finishing touches, adding highlights on the letters, the black letters. And I'm also going to give my black fish some eyes. You can go ahead and add all the doodling that you like. You can create borders if you want. I'm going to leave it as it is. Here is a close-up look on this page. I'm not going to put it back into my art journal yet since the eyes aren't dry. But here are all the pages that I made on those two videos. I had so much fun creating them and there is something satisfying on creating your very own focal points. I hope this video was really helpful for you as I played with basic mediums, mainly watercolor, and I draw my own focal points. Down below the description area I will have a link of all the supplies that I used if you want to check those out. Here are some close-up photos on all the pages that I made for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Don't forget to leave me a comment and like this video. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.